The second important implication is, like I picked out these examples because they were easy and you could just tell me what the inverses are, but they're not always so simple. For instance, um, don't write this yet. If I said, here's a function. I'm just gonna go ahead and assume you probably don't know what the inverse of this function is off the top of your head. And if you did, I would be somewhat intimidated, okay? How do we go about finding the inverse of this function? I might call it f, in fact. If I know what the original function is, how do I find the inverse? And again, the idea is to swap, okay? So if I take this, the implication is to find the inverse, the actual mechanism you use is to swap the input, which is always going to be x, with the output, and that will be either y or f of x, okay? Let's have a go at this one. Let's have a go at this one. Actually, I'll take it back. I'm going to... You'll see why in a second. This will just make it easier to write. Sorry. <laughs> now, if this is the original function, by the way, please be careful, because what I'm about to do is define a whole new function, right? So I want to have one y, which is the original, and another y, another y, which is the inverse, okay? So I'm going to make a big flashing sign that says that's the original one. And now I'm going to have a look at the inverse. Okay? I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do the switch. Okay? Let's have a go at this. If I put x over here and I'm going to replace every x I had over there with a y. Hmm. I could pack up and go home. I've done it. <laughs> I have actually successfully swapped. But of course, this is not in a very useful form and I know almost nothing about what this actual function is going to look like just on that basis. What shall I do here to tidy this thing up? I should change the subject, right? Uh, we are used to having this guy as the output, making that the subject, so let's do it over here. It looks like it's a tangled mess, but it's not that bad, right? Let's multiply through. That gives this. Yep. If I want to make y the subject, what am I going to have to do next? Take everything, take all the y's. Yeah, I'm going to need to collect like terms, yeah? So I need all the y's over here and everything else on the other side. So if I say x, y, take away y, that looks like x plus 1. Are you happy with that? The reason for collecting like terms was so I can, well, before I make it the subject, I need to factorize out, don't I? All right, factoring guys, factorizing out y will let me then divide through and I get it. So if I say x minus 1. Why is it the same? Okay, yeah, just wait. Okay? Does that look okay? Have I done anything algebraically wrong? No. Does it look okay? You, no, it's, there's four lines of working, or three lines really. Does it look okay? Have I made an error? No. So I'm going to complete it now. Now you've successfully found the inverse. What does this mean? What does it's this mean? Even function. It's a reflection of So, come back. Come back to what we said right at the beginning, which is that geometrically, the way to get to a function and its inverse, the relationship is a reflection, right? Okay, so what does this look like? That's not a rhetorical question. What does this look like? Come on, tell me something you know about this graph. Yep. This asymptote at x equals 1 and the y equals 1. Asymptote at, for the original, right? x equals 1 and y equals? One. How do I know it's y equals 1? Because he's right. You limit x approaches zero. Not infinity. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since we've done that. It's like, I know it's zero or infinity. It's got to be one of those guys. <laughs> yes, and then? Because as the function approaches the extremity of x equals to infinity, yep. The one and minus one become insignificant. Good. So these become trivial, which means that as you take the limit, these guys are just approaching each other. So the ratio between two numbers are the same as one. Okay. So there, that's fine. So now what? Now what do I do with those? Yeah. Shh. I'm trying to. Trying to listen. Because the way the graph is drawn is curved, um, the vertices are the um, turning points on either 
section of the mm -hmm. uh, on the white bus service line. Okay, so it looks like, oh, by the way, where are our intercepts? I have some intercepts tonight. Yes. If, if x equals, uh, sorry, if y equals 0, then x is equal to negative 1. And if x equals 0, y is also equal to negative 1. I have enough to draw this now. Yes. Okay, are you happy with that? It's pretty rough. Okay, now, I did it again. Where's my line to reflect across? It goes right smack bang through the middle. So you do your reflection, and then what do you get back? Answer, the same thing. Okay, so it's really great when you pick an example and it, it hits two flags for you at the same time. There's no problem with, it, with a function being its own inverse, okay? I can think of two other functions you know, simple vanilla ones, that would, I could list over here that has the same so, so the really easy one is y equals x. Can someone give me another one? Come on, we just did this one. y equals 1 over x, right? It's going to do the same thing except it's just moved over this way a little bit, right? Your asymptotes are on the coordinate axis, okay? So there's an infinite number of functions which have an inverse function and the function being identical to each other, okay? Because there's no reason why if you have the right symmetry, you just reflect across the same thing. Okay, so that's how you actually find it. That's how you know the domain and range.